diva crescer esse diva crescer hope you enjoy you'll have a great time hosted by Sharina hope you enjoy you'll have a great time hosted by Sharina hope you enjoy oh oh hello beautiful people you know what time it is it's now time for another vlog so, it is late at night, it's Saturday, and I've had a very, very slow day today. And so, I want to start the Diva Glitz Lifestyle video. But we're going to have a bit of a different video today, and it is going to be the Diva Glitz show. So, I'm going to keep it in a nice, warm atmosphere. intro so you get to understand what the Diva Glitch show is about.
so I've just put myself together to make myself more comfortable for the Steve Glitz show because we're going to have a good talk and we're going to wind down, relax and have a talk because it's very much needed. So let's begin. It's the Diva Glitz Tango. It's a bit low at the minute because I haven't got it on loudspeaker. I don't have a loudspeaker up here. So I just want to bring a little show to the channel. I used to do the Diva Glitz show on um, Facebook but I want to see how it gets on on YouTube. And today I'm just going to bring a vast array of topics because I want you to understand what the Diva Glitch show is going to be about on a regular intervals. And I'm going to section the Diva Glitch show off in individual talks because at the end of the day, I want to make sure that everything I'm talking about gets its fair share. Excuse me with this wig because it is getting in the way of my eyes. So I want to have my fair share of talks when I'm talking, so I want to even them up. So get yourself a nice hot drink and let's start this Diva Glitz show. Mmm, nice. Enjoying that. So let's start with the first topic. I wanted to start off with relationships because they're very important. I'm, I will be speaking to, about them more extensively on another Diva Glitz um, show. But relationships has its ups and downs. And I just wanted to share basically some positive words for relationship because I'm finding that we can talk about all the dramas and all of the problems and all of the experiences that we've been through and all the hurts and all the pains to get over what has happened in the past and no it's not easy to get over you know something that has hurt us but it dawned on me the other day because I was going through something myself and through all of my spiritual training I call it because I'm learning I don't know if my eyelashes come up I might have to go and glue that in a minute through my spiritual training I I need to see the positive through it doesn't matter what the situation is so say if you've had an argument with your partner, this is one example, and he's really, really hurt you, or she's really, really hurt you, and um, we tend to go over the drama again and again and again and again in our mind or our head, or we speak it out, or we ring a friend and go over it again, and we cry and we go over it again. But what came to me is I need to talk about the sort of relationship I want. So when I have a type, an argument now or any type of disagreement, I've trained myself to um, talk about the relationship I want. So. I say, he's beautiful to me, he buys me flowers, he takes me on holiday, he treats me like a queen, and he's so happy, and we're so happy, and we're positive together, and I just create the, the dream relationship that I want. And that's what I've been doing, and visualising the future that we're going to have, or the day I, I'm seeing the actual day so the argument happened and I'm, I'm seeing him being romantic to me like the argument never happened 
I'm seeing him treating me good and we're going out for dinner and you know all the goodness because I it dawned on me all my life I've been playing out the dramas over and over again so then I'm keep attracting the dramas I keep attracting the same type of man so I said he may not be the right one for you either he may not be the one that's going to give you all of what you're seeing you have to remember if you're upset by someone that you're in in a relationship with and you are visualizing the outcome you're bringing that into your next experience whether it be with the same man or whether it be with a new partner that's supposed to come into your life and the same goes for a man when he's with his woman you do the same thing you visualize the positivity what type of relationship are you looking for write it down if you have to how do you want that relationship to go I know I'm looking for a loving, positive relationship with a man that has a lot in common. And I got to the point where I didn't want this to continuously keep happening. So I now know if I have some sort of disagreement with my boyfriend, I now go away and I visualize the type of relationship I want because he's having problems seeing the, the beautiful life. So I said, I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna create it. And I just ignore the drama. I don't dwell on the dramas. I continue to read. I continue to visualize. I continue to write down exactly how I want my lifestyle and our lifestyle to be and I see him in a positive light regardless of how he's acting out and I just see him in his authentic self because we lose ourselves. you see we probably were going through some type of stress within ourselves so someone has to be the stronger one to see him or her in her god light basically because we lose ourselves so we have to visualize if we're so in love if he's not the right one or she's not the right partner then god life will send you who's for you but in the presence in your presence go and write it how you want it to be it's all right you having a little you know meltdown for a little while because it's normal if someone's hurt your feelings, if your partner's hurt your feelings, it's fine. But remember, what is worth it? Is it worth bringing in more dramas or is it worth bringing in exactly the life with your partner that you want? Go off and plan your wedding. Go off and plan the holiday you're going to have together. Go off and plan a romantic dinner together. Go off and plan going to the cinema. Go off and plan tonight. Me and him are going to be so romantic. Me and her are going to be so romantic tonight. You know? And he, they're in love. He's in love with me. And everything's going to be all right. Try it out. I don't know exactly what you're looking for in your relationship. You're going to have children together. The relationship's going to be fine. Because far too many times we're in relationships that we are not happy in and be able to understand that he may not be the one for you if he's not making you 100% happy and you're going around the same thing over and over again remember to visualize the type of relationship or she may not be the right one for you remember you are important you are worth it you deserve love and make sure that you're loving yourself because hopefully you're not the problem as well. So you've got to love yourself and make sure you bring goodness to the relationship. But try it out and write down every day if you're not in a good relationship. And every day if you want something different in your relationship. Because you've got to remember some relationships 
just have the same old routine. And that's when relationships get boring. That's when partners start taking each other for granted. You've just got to keep the relationship alive. So find new things to do, you know, just confess it, write it out. It, I don't know if there's any kind of romantic books out there to help enhance, you know, a beautiful relationship. I think I've got one book that talks about relationship. Look at relationship books with successful couples. It's good to read about positive successful couples as well because it enhances that relation your relationship to stay alive when you're around positive people that have been together for a long time get to understand their ways and their successes and what they um, incorporate in their relationships to make their relationships stay strong because at the end of the day we do have ups and downs because we are human and we do have outside stresses in life because um, life can just sometimes be overwhelming with all the things we have to do in order to keep up the bills and you know looking after the children you know because you know the children can play up but I'll talk about that again another time and um, also keeping up a certain lifestyle so we have to gel the partners and you know we have good days and bad days we lose ourselves, you know and we all need some type of support you know so the support is staying positive as you possibly can and being good at writing about your ideal day with your partner get into that type of practice and also um, remembering if you have arguments with your partner to don't dwell on it for too long go away even if you have to talk about how you want your relationship to be on video you don't have to share the video of anyone you don't have to share the video of anyone um you can just talk about it because it's good to just air things out as well and like i said write about how you want your relationship to be because that's what i do now I might have a little tiff and i speak to him and then when i'm away from him i see his successes I see my successes I see you know what we need to do together I see us together I see what we need to be doing in the future and I see all goodness so and it just brings a lot of peace and then I'm able to just forget about the drama we just had previously and we just settle down because we go through things but we have to bring in happiness somehow and the only way you're going to bring that happiness in is by seeing it visualizing it writing it down seeing it in your mind seeing yourself on the beach with your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend and just seeing yourself in a happy place after you've had the argument definitely see yourself in a happy place there's no point in putting that drama in your head after that argument. Just go to your safe place in your mind and see you and your partner. I always see me and him in front of a fireplace or I see us on the beach hugging or walking on the beach holding hands. And it always brings back peace and love and the next thing I'm hearing from him and he's talking happily to me. So, you're going to go through things in your present reality. You might go through things for a long time. But the inner world will always make everything all right when it comes to relationships. And it will always bring back peace and love. Believe you me, it works. Try it out for yourself. I will be back with a show just about relationships. And I will be giving you some tools as well 
to really show you what I'm talking about. I've just given you some examples. So I'm going on to the next topic now. I hope what I've just spoken about relationships is beneficial for you. But I will be back with that talk because it is very, very beautiful because I found so much beauty doing this new technique and it's so much more peaceful because I've had so many problems in relationship and I've allowed the drama to overtake my mind and it's taken me ages to understand how to find relationship inner peace and then when you have the inner peace inside and when you see your journey with your partner inside of yourself it will come outwardly it always works out perfectly you know but you have to see it within yourself first and foremost so let me move on to the next topic so the next topic now is money so now i'm still trying to manifest more money i'm not doing too brilliantly at it i'm going to tell you the truth of what's going on with me right now let me just have some more tea so i can just chill out with this one because it's not going very well for me at the moment when it comes to manifesting money and i'm going to tell you why because it's my inner world that's still basically i call it healing the money blocks the emotional blocks but i found out something today and i thought i'm going to show you a book that i got today for the post i ordered and basically, emotional blocks is what I have. The emotional blocks are because I was brought up to not believe in money. And it happens to a lot of us. Not the only one that's gone through it. The reason why I've been brought up like that is because that was a generation. And the generation before that was conditioned to think like that because... Um, we were just brainwashed, basically. We were brainwashed to believe that we were poor. And it wasn't the truth. And there was reasons in why we were conditioned like that. And I'll talk about that another time. Because I really don't want to go into that side of things right now. So, I was brought up to believe I was poor. And something inside of me didn't really believe that but I didn't know how to get out of that because my I was taught that and then we brought we was brought up like that to feel like we couldn't have certain things and we couldn't do certain things and it is the, the restriction is really really hard and it's like in a prison because you can't move to do what you want to do and still to this day, I'm still like having problems in taking myself out of that kind of thinking because it's been conditioned in me so much. So I'm going to try and explain myself as clearly as I possibly can because when it comes to money, a lot of shows need to be done on money. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of shows because for me to undo the brainwashing is not as simple as I thought it was going to be and I've done a lot of work around money and today I was sitting down and I had so much different thoughts going through my mind today and I was like when is it going to stop when is this type of thinking going to stop because I really want to reach that I want to reach I'm older now and it always sort sort of like dawns on me that oh it's never going to happen you're never going to receive the wealth that you want those thoughts come far too much like I've got a certain vision of what I want to do I see what I want I don't want to talk about what I want because it's not about my vision but I'm sitting down and naturally a vision is coming through my mind. But at the same time, the limitation is still there of 
not so much how, but I'm here in this presence wanting to do some certain things, wanting to go some certain places, and I still can see myself here in, in my presence and had no motivation all this week. I've not felt, I haven't done absolutely nothing this week, I'm supposed to exercise, etc. But feeling totally deflated, not inspired, not motivated to do anything, and totally just have not done anything all this week because it was like, like I haven't got it to do it at the moment for reasons I do not want to go into. And the most simplest things I want to go out and do. But something in me is showing me right now this is where you're supposed to be at because your mind is going through something in the way of releasing something. Because before, years ago, I was, I've, I had money, but I'd be up and down spending and my mind really wasn't focused on any absolutely anything really when I think about it and I had a awakening I think it was two weeks ago now and my awakening was you need to read books and you need to focus on these books and you need to write because I've had quite a few breakdowns you see and I will talk about my breakdown another time as well my breakdown should I say so there was something wrong with my mind and I never knew that so I was going along in life I didn't have loads and loads and loads and loads of money but the life I was living was comfortable enough I was around my family we used to go out we used to do lots of nice things with some of the family members and I didn't feel like I needed anything else I wasn't I didn't feel like I didn't I knew I was depressed but I didn't look at the depression because I would take myself distract out of distractions basically I have out of distractions and then I had my children and then I got severely down not because of the children it's just a whole, whole different lifestyle and then I needed more money for the children and then when I had the children it dawned on me that I had a certain lifestyle that I wanted when I had my children but what I failed to do was plan before I had my children to make sure I had what they needed when they were born and there was no plan. I didn't plan my kids. I didn't know they were coming into my life. My life was just not organized. It was scatty, you know? So my son was a surprise to me. I just wasn't prepared for this little boy, this little baby boy. And I certainly didn't have the money for him. I didn't have the right career either because I wasn't earning enough money from the career I had. And my whole life became, I can say, poorer, basically. So I started to read some books and it didn't really bring me what I needed, you know. I had, I always had, it's not so I didn't have, I had food, I had clothes, he had food, he had clothes, but I was always lonely and depressed and I, I never had the faith enough to believe that I could take care of this child all the way through I never felt safe because I found out within myself that I didn't believe in me I never saw myself as good enough so this is all wealth all of these attributes that I was supposed to have my self-esteem was low I had no confidence. I didn't believe I'd be any good in any type of organisation. I didn't have the skills, you know, that I needed. I wasn't disciplined in some certain areas. And then I was suffering depression at the same time. So my son's going to be 19 in February. So I ended up getting very unwell when I had my child, which I'm not going to talk about because this is too long. 
of a story and um but he always had i always had but it wasn't to the standards i was looking for so i got down because i wanted to have a certain house i wanted to be traveling with my children i wanted a car i wanted to have good relationships with my mum and my dad i wanted the extended family to be there in the, in the way i wanted them to be there and instead of everything being blissful, it ended up being the total opposite. It was dramas, all dramas. It wasn't happy, happy experiences at all. So depression came in far too much stronger. My kids are big now and I've qualified as an event planner a long time ago as well. And I still haven't accomplished the level of success that I wanted to in events but I have done events a lot of charity events as well I've helped out the community and what happened is which is this is all very relevant um I've been indoors because I used I normally go gym if you watch my channel I'm always going to the gym what happened is I was on a path and I put plans in place all the time. I put plans because I do goal setting. I've done so much writing because I've read um, Think and Grow Rich. And I've read some other books. And I listened to Bob Proctor, listened to Louise Hayes, listened to mentors on TV. All types of people watch YouTube videos. You know, I've watched so much different things. I've been around so much different people. And I couldn't, because... I couldn't see the vision that I had in my mind and it was quite of a large scale. I was never happy because I wanted to see that, what I was looking for. And for years and years and years and years and years, still today, it's not here. But what dawned on me today, because it's like, Life is keeping me in this bedroom, resting, because I've not been well in my body. And also the mind is sort of like showing me my whole journey, so to speak. And it's making me understand the life that I've lived and why I've lived the life I've lived and how it did make me rich it may have not made me rich paper wise but it made me rich in so many other ways so it's like piecing all of the puzzle pieces together and my son is an entertainer today and I remember when he was a little boy I visualised and used to get him up singing. I used to buy him a little mic. And I bought him a guitar. And I had a big mirror in the front room. And I used to say to my son, you're a superstar. You're famous. And every single day for about 10 years, I used to tell this little boy how successful he is. How famous he is. And I used to do singing as well. And used to write and what have you. And my son now writes songs. And he said to me the other day he would like to be big on stage. So even though sometimes we may have to wait. And it feels like, because I, I, like I said, I've got a roof over my head. I've got food in my belly. I've got clothes upon clothes. I've got, you know, more than I can ever ask for. But sometimes I'm just not grateful, you know. And today, that's, that's the type of day I had today. A day of feeling trapped, basically. And that's the blockage that I need to release because I want to go and travel. I would like to travel more. I want to be able to um, move to a new place as well. I really want a new house because... I love this house, don't get me wrong, but it's, you know, 
needing some work and I really don't have the strength to redecorate this house myself and I know I want a more modern house that's got you know its own design already incorporated in it so I've been getting quite a few dreams of a new house which is really really nice and I've been getting the feeling inside that I'm going to be moving we don't know how but that's where it all starts it starts from within and I've been getting some nice dreams I've been getting some stressful dreams as well because obviously if you're going through stress dreams will come like that as well to your mind so try your best when you go to sleep to write about your dreams before you go to sleep and I haven't been doing that I'm supposed to write about it night and day write your actual dream of how you want your life to be so I mainly want a home a new home there's an event I want to put on for my son and I want to do another event but I've spoken to my auntie about it and I wasn't really feeling to do it but I sent her the idea she said she'll get back to me and today I felt confident enough to say yes I'm going to push that one through and yes it feels that I need to do it with my auntie because I was a little bit like back and forth whether I should do it with my auntie or not because I hadn't been getting on with my family you see so I decided and something sparked up inside of me I said yes I'm going to put this event on because it will be very good for the family for all of us to hopefully draw closer and I believe it will help us to draw closer so I've got a lot of event ideas and I know God told me next year there's going to be a lot of changes and all of the unsafety that I've been feeling inside because we feel unsafe when we are not used to a change that's what it is not used to a change so I heard something yesterday about you have to feel safe with anything in life because we are safe because it's always going to be all right it's always going to be all right so once you know that you're going to be all right financially you're going to be all right with your bills you're going to be all right with your food you're going to be all right with clothes you yes you are going to go on that holiday yes you go that money is just going to come you just have to have that assurance within yourself that you're going to be all right and that what was what the problem was when i brought up my children all and that that was far too many years of that that poverty mindset that was put inside of me and me not feeling like I was able to take care of my children because I felt like the next day I had to find a way the next day I had to find a way the next day and that's how my mind was trained so it's basically you have to train your mind to understand because the way life maybe have taught most of us is we are always looking outwardly to figure out a way and that's what happened I was in survival mode and that's what made it hard because I was only going by what I had coming in and that wasn't a lot and then I was trying to find work and then trying to juggle the children and then needing to make sure that the children are not not neglected by being around other people that can't feed them the way I could have. So I had a very hard time bringing up my children because I wasn't trained to understand how to create more wealth. So I've had to read books and it's taken me a long time. But I do want to teach what I've learned in order for it not to happen especially to a single mother because I've been a single mother as well because it's hell I've had lots of breakdowns it's been a hot ups and when I mean hell I mean hell I've literally gone to hell in my inner state because it's been that much pressure and that much strain there is no support for single mothers you know the services do not support us all they do is put us down and they know that we need support and help and they use our struggle against us 
and, and, and turn it around and make us out to be rubbish. When in turn, they should have helped us to be able to prosper in order for the children to prosper. But, you know, no, everyone's out for themselves, including organisations. So I want to be able to teach women with children, men as well, if you want to know, know how to make more money for your family and how to stay together with your family as well. Because a lot of men leave because of pressure, financial pressure, because they've not been taught how to make money and it just becomes too much. And then there's arguments. There becomes arguments and the arguments create dysfunction and separation in families as well. So like I said, I'm being honest and open. It's taken me a long time to understand it. I've gone through far too much. No one really helps anyone, any um, people are out there to be given to themselves. And even if, you know, they do know how to help another, they won't because they want to be the ones appearing to be richer. Now, I don't have that type of mentality because I don't think it's nice to look at another person struggling. Even though I've helped a lot of people and they've ended up get gaining and they haven't been grateful and then they've just thrown it in my face and made out like I've done nothing for them and that held me back for a little while because it made me bitter it didn't stop me from helping people but I did come across loads of people that just take 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 and what it dawned on me is you know there's just people out there that they grow and there's a lot of people out there that just, just know how to use people. And I don't really want to create those type of people. What I'm asking of anyone that comes on my channel, if you can just help another person through the knowledge that you gain, please do. Please don't be the type of people to just take knowledge and then keep it to yourself. Because the reason why you're gaining the knowledge is to help someone else. And the more we rise, the more the world's going to be a better place. And then we can eliminate poverty. We can eliminate hunger. We can eliminate homelessness. We hopefully can eliminate war. And we can place positivity and paradise on this earth. But we can only do it through supporting each other I'm not saying sacrifice your whole life for another because there is only so much you can do for another person because when you're trying to help someone for example that is totally negative and they do not understand anything but negativity you can plant good seeds in them but don't let them bring you down I've had that many times around people for too long and their mindset is not shifting within a couple even a couple of years or a couple of months don't stick around too long plant your seeds and they eventually will grow inside of that person because when you're around negative people they never know how to speak positively at that time because they need to learn so if you can give a good word know that that good word has definitely been planted inside of that person and you've done well but please i'm helping you please go and help someone else and that's what i'm asking of anyone that comes on my channel so basically i'm reading this money book at the moment because like money's a big subject that's why i go on and on and sometimes and i'm going to stop soon when it with this money bit so because this is the area that i'm really really working on so money and the law of attraction Learning to attract wealth, health and happiness. And this is a teaching of Abraham. So this Esther and Jerry Hicks. Okay. So this book came through today. And the thing about this book is, is what it, the language is totally different to our everyday, you know, English language. But the thing about this book is it will, it does make changes. Esther Hicks' work 
makes inner changes very quickly and you may not be aware of it you do not need to understand it some people want to look at the book and understand every word and you can research some words but when it comes to esther hicks what i come to find because i've been listening to a lot of her work on youtube changes come beautifully and it works from the inside you know so i've been reading this book what happened to me i've read up to page 10 I, I was getting a lot of thoughts, loads and loads of thoughts, so I had to put the book down. I was getting far too much thoughts, and then I was sitting down most of the day up to about 10 o'clock, and I was getting all these thoughts, but I didn't question them. I sat with them, and I was gentle with myself, because that's what I found out also. We cannot fight what we don't want to hear, because you end up having an inner battle with yourself. You have to be kind to the negative okay so if some negative stuff are coming up maybe the past imagery things that may be upsetting you you might have a cry don't feed it don't try to fight it because it, it needs to surface for a reason is i don't like within myself know a hundred percent why past images will surface but today it was very very strong and i just sat with it i was peaceful i listened to some sea sounds and i sort of like was piecing together some type of it was an event and i, I got to understand some certain things and even though i didn't want to see these types of images it was to do with me releasing something that needs to be released within me something that's been hindering my growth for a very 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 long time so i had a relief from this blockage at about 11 o'clock and i started smiling i started feeling happier and i thought to myself oh my gosh i don't want to go through this all week i've been tired and drained and just resting because whatever is going on has to be released. Traumas, all of this stuff is a part of how I've been conditioned, you know. So you have to be kind to yourself. If you don't have enough money coming in, don't get at yourself. Don't say that you're no good or you're rubbish because you don't have such and such as that or you do, you can't fix up your house you don't have the carpet for your floor you don't have this for your child you don't have that for your child no be kind to yourself because you didn't know any better okay and if you're gonna beat yourself up it's just gonna make life worse you're just gonna end up unwell i had to learn the hard way don't put yourself down for the process and you might say to me me but it's easier said than done but believe you me i've been through it i've been through it okay and to go through the anguish is it is horrible to sit down and think that you're not good enough is horrible i mean i had some feelings of that today and i just had to sit with it i had to just sit with it and i didn't say anything to it when I when I saw it, I didn't say anything to it. Normally, I get upset and I want to cry and I want to get out of myself. But I didn't even argue with it today. So be patient with yourself. Do your financial affirmations and know that it's coming to pass. I've got my financial affirmations here. Money flows to me easily and effortlessly. And I've got it in my on my front wall. So I'm sitting here and I can see it. I am financially free. I've got it on my wall. I am successful at everything I do. So these affirmations I see every day, every morning. And they are doing something to my inner world. They definitely are. So if you're having a hard day with money and you know some people are finding it hard to even eat food 
just keep the faith because things will change. You have to be strong in your belief, in your visualising. Learn how to visualise. Very important that you can visualise what you truly want. If you can't see it in your mind, write it down. And the other day, I'm going to cut short now and I'll come back another time with a money talk because I really want to really focus the Diva Glitch show on money mainly because I truly believe it's very important. And it's not just money in the way of the paper, it's money in the way of character and how you can be good in this community, in this world to help other people as well to successfully have wealth and to do good with the money do good with it set up some group to help people you know people out there do not understand what another man understands and we can constantly keep giving to the rich people that's fine but we need to help out people that can't help themselves we can't continuously keep giving to people that already are blessed more than enough we have to be kind enough to give to those that need a helping hand we have to start making some changes. You just need balance. So I found um, a talk on YouTube. I'm sure my uncle was talking about it as well. And I found this um, new style of affirmation. So it's basically called Lofty Questions. I found a book on it. It's got a video on it on YouTube. Lofty is L-O-F-T-Y. So basically... It's questions are positive phrase questions that encourage helpful answers, insight, solution. Lofty questions are posed by. So lofty questions, they say affirmations bring up negative thoughts. And I have, I have come across that myself, that negative thoughts come up. But it's also helped me to heal and it's helped me to build my vision. So if a person's in severe financial difficulties, I think lofty questions will be great. So... One example the man gave me was, how comes I'm so fit? Because I'm always telling, already telling you that you're fit. How comes I'm so fit? So I, I, I liked that a lot. And that made a lot of sense to me because I'm telling myself. And it's already given me that power. So I'm going to bring up the... Um, Lofty question, what does it mean? Lofty meaning. And I like it a lot, to be honest. Lofty. A lofty question is basically an empowering question and affirmation method. Instead of just affirmations like, I have powerful intuition, or worse still, disempowering questions like, why am I not into interest? intuitive intuitive enough ha ha you can put opt to use lofty question method like why do i have such powerful intuition so i just said the word into intuition so instead of why am i not into intuitive 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 sorry i can read really enough why am i not so when you say why am i not it pulls it away from you so it says here, why do I have such powerful intuition? That's giving you more confidence. I find it gives me more confidence. Why do I have such powerful intuition? Why do I have such powerful intuition? So I've already told me that I've got it. Makes too much sense to me. So I found a book on Amazon. It's not on eBay. Lofty Questions. So look it up on Amazon. And I'm going to be buying the book. In fact, I think I'm going to buy it in a minute. And they've got some affirmations here that I'm going to read. And I'm going to end this subject now. Where's it gone? It's not coming up. It's gone. Oh, I think it's loading. But it's taking long to load. Oh, there it is. So it's got it on um, Pinterest, Lofty. And I'm sure my uncle was talking about it as well. All right, it's hit here. Today is going to be incredible. I choose happiness today. I'm grateful for my body. 
The sun, sunrise fills me with energy. I'm filled. I am full of courage. Today I choose greatness. My body is healing and feels strong. I can conquer anything. I don't know if that's lofty questions. Because it doesn't look like it. And it, it doesn't look like these are lofty questions. So let me look again. Because it's just new to me, you see. So, no, that's not it either. So I found some. There's not much information on these lofty questions, but they seem to be very powerful. So some lofty questions. The divine will answer questions. Negative questions are blocked to personal freedom. It's a lower level of energy, okay? So, number one. What's the million dollar idea that I need to develop? So you're asking yourself, what is the million dollar idea that I need to develop. Two, can I keep what money I have and accept more money than I can ever imagine? Can I keep what money I have and accept more money than I can ever imagine? Three, can I have more than enough money to pay my bills, to save some and to have some left over to have fun? So you're asking yourself these questions. Can I have more than enough money to pay my bills? Can I have more than enough money to pay my bills? So, I'm not getting any negative thoughts, so it's going inside of me. And number three, affirmations. I know the universe, this is affirmations. I know the universe loves me so much and it will support me and answer my questions. I know I can ask and it is given. I can ask wealthy questions today. My life is so amazing. How can the universe give me more? How can the universe give me more than enough than I ever felt possible? answer because i ask so you have to do some research on lofty questions and you have to obviously get to understand it but it's from what i've just read just now the answers that i got is you need to sit down and you need to feel confident enough to speak about money because i find and that's what i just got just now after reading that i'm going to save that when I'm speaking about money, for one, I feel a little bit bored. Two, it feels like it's not real yet and it's not here. Four, I just want to go out and have fun. And I don't want to be sitting here educating myself. Like It feels like it's education and it, it has to feel like it's fun. And what that's just gone and done is fill me up within myself to say talk about it some more that's what I just got talk about it however you want and I feel that it's gone inside I feel where before I felt it was outside of me it wasn't a part of me by doing the lofty question it feels like that that's a part of me so I don't feel so empty I don't feel so depressed so now I'm like oh I can see how I want to write about it. So it seems like, because the guy on YouTube, he was doing a, one of those, it's not a TED talk, it was another talk, basically was saying, when you do affirmations, it brings too much negative thoughts, but lofty questions don't, because he, work, he was working for a massive organisation, and this is how he had to run this massive organisation, with lofty questions. So... I said, okay, let me look it up because I've been working with affirmation for some time. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not going to tell no lies. I have been feeling depressed with doing affirmations because I've been doing it for so long and I was receiving. But it stopped. For three years, I haven't really gained anything because... I was just really doing something else. But I haven't been feeling happy. And I was like, I didn't want to detach myself from affirmations. Because I know they're beneficial. But they're beneficial for something else. Because I have given affirmations to other people. And it's benefited them. And they felt ha quite happy with it. But what I think it is, because I'm, I'm interested in events and events is sort of like 
building so i need these types of questions that's what i need like business people need it people that are running organizations need these type of questions so like affirmations could be for a mother you know someone that's not really striving for anything too big whereas it seems like lofty questions connect that i feel connected so I know I can ask and it is given. You see, give confidence. That's what I needed. That's the right question I'm asking for. I need confidence. So this will probably help me more with my confidence. So when I get the lofty book, I will let you know about it. And I will be talking about it more as well as doing affirmation. Because affirmations help a lot. But because I need confidence and self-esteem... This is what's needed for me. And affirmations bring up negative in order for you to build your vision. Because what we're trying to do is move away from our past. But it's beneficial to sometimes see your past in order to connect your dots to see what and who you are supposed to be. Because I found out a lot about myself. And what my journey has been about from when I was a little girl all the way up to now. And what I was put on this earth for. But sometimes we need a rest, you know, from building our visions, you know. Because we're all put on this earth for a divine purpose. We are all supposed to be of value on this earth. And we're all supposed to be doing something grand, you know. Because God put us on this earth to all you know, build beauty on this earth. So, at the end of the day, we have to understand the information that we are given. So, I try my best to be as far as I possibly can be. So, I also read these money affirmation cards when I feel led two so this i've shown before money and law of attraction cards so i'm going to read one this is one i can earn money by doing what i love to do as you practice your more positive best feeling story in time your pleasure will become the dominant vibration within you and then as you couple your pleasure with your means of earning the two will blend perfectly and enhance each other there is no better way to earn money than to do the things you love to do money can flow into your experience through endless avenues it is what is that say not the choice of the craft that limits the money that flows but only your attitude towards money so we all have to practice if we do not believe in our money coming to us because it's attitude. We've got to get the right attitude. But if you're born into thing that you're not supposed to have it, it's going to take some time for you to believe that you're worthy enough to have it because I still struggle with it because my mindset is still on lack because it's still been trained to think like that. So... Especially when you're trying to find, not find so much find it, when you're trying to bring it, when you're trying to find it within yourself. What I'm feeling rich, that's just what I'm working on, the feeling of richness, because I'm just so not accustomed to it. I might have all these outside resources, but you have to have the feeling of richness within you. So I'm placing all these images, mainly images of being on holiday, because that's what I want. And I keep seeing because I I wasn't enjoying putting on events. I wasn't enjoying it. So I'm trying to find the enjoyment due to the fact that I need to bring a certain, you know, people on stage. And I, I, I really find it hard to get on with people because of my past, you know, of um, what I've been through in my past. So I've brought it into my future and... I find any kind of, um, what you call it, 
you know, if someone's being um, over dramatic or they haven't healed from their past, I find it very difficult sometimes to support someone now that's going through something because I've had to try my best to be as compassionate as I possibly can through someone else's tantrum, so to speak, because so much people are going through difficult times, isn't it? So it's not all the time that other people can take on someone's aggression or negativity because they don't know they're going through it or attitude or the frustration that some people are going through or if someone doesn't understand my character flaws and they can be judgmental etc and it just becomes too much for me so I'm having to try and find a way to get on with people that don't want to support me or they just want to take and they're looking about themselves. I have to know and understand how to deal with people. And I don't really know how to do that. I find it very hard. So this is what I was going through today in my mind, you know, seeing and understanding why I haven't succeeded in my craft to the level I would have liked to. And it's a lot to do with not really feeling 100% happy with working with people because I've had so much negative experiences with people because everyone's out for what they need so I'm always trying to figure out how to make sure I get what I need as well as making sure I shouldn't I shouldn't have to make sure that someone else gets what they need they should be able to do that for themselves do you understand but I find sometimes that human beings are always expecting another to do for them. It's like we've got our own power. But then that is about not understanding the law of attraction and not understanding their own inner world. And that's something that really we've only been given the information because it was taken and only a few had the information and they wouldn't share it. So now we are in a time where we do have to understand how to have our own power within ourselves in order to not feel like someone else is more powerful than us because they won't share their way of thinking because they want to keep all the power for themselves and then they know how to take and misuse another person and the other person in front of them has no clue that that person is using them and abusing them. So I'm still learning how to deal with certain people that will tell lies you know and be corrupt and look at a certain weakness within me and then try to pull me down from that weakness because it hasn't been healed yet my inner child still hasn't been healed and that's the next topic i'm going to be talking about so i'm going to end this little money section it has gone for a little bit and I'm going to talk about two more subjects, which is your inner child and um, love. I'm going to talk about a little bit. So let me move on. So now I want to talk about how to heal your inner child because money, like I said, is a very big subject. I cannot go over money and it's too much of a big subject to be talking about it. So I will be doing lots of more talks about money. So now I want to talk about... Excuse me. I'm in a calm, relaxed space. If you need to yawn and let it out, do so. And just chillax. This is a chillax environment right now. So basically... I want to talk about healing your inner child and like this is another thing I'm going to be talking about a lot a lot a lot because if you have traumas from your past and they've never been healed it's detrimental to your future because there's people out there and they're nasty people as well that can see your weaknesses and this has been going on for far too many centuries. This is how people have been able to get ahead of people. Because they've seen people's weaknesses. 
And instead of helping that person heal it, they have decided to mash it up even further. So it's very important that you are aware that you have an inner child that needs healing. So any type of upset that comes up in you is your inner child telling you you need to be kind to that hurt because it wasn't supported when you was a child so the parent wasn't there to support that behavior maybe that upset so it stayed there because maybe the trauma was there you might have fallen over and hurt your leg and then there was no one there to nurture that or you may have not passed an exam and there was no one there to support you through the failure that you felt you had I don't know what the predicament is. You might have been taken away from your parents, which I was taken away from my parents, so I was traumatised. And the thing is, what people don't understand is, if it's not healed, it continuously keeps coming up, and then it grows bigger. It doesn't go away. People think, oh, you're adult now. You shouldn't be acting like a child. It doesn't go away. If no one has given you any type of therapy, like I didn't have no therapy when I was taken away from my parents. And to this day, people keep saying, nothing happened to me. But I said, why did I have so much breakdowns for nothing to happen to me? No one understands. And it's such a lonely world. It's so, And then people think you're creating a sub story. And then people think... If you ever know how much negativity I've been through, it's unbelievable. And then... That negativity has been placed on top of what I'm trying to heal. No support, no understanding. So I had to go away and find information about what I was going through because it's, it appeared to everybody else that I wasn't telling the truth. So your inner child is very important. And this is why I talk about it because I care about people. And I'd be damned if I'm going to let other people be ridiculed for the pains that they're going through. Okay? So, like I was saying before, when it comes to dealing with people, it's not so easy for me to deal with people face to face because I feel all of us have some type of wound, inner child wounds and I can't always deal with people face to face but I can deal with people behind the screen because I'm not getting no feedback unless obviously people send a message but what I want people to understand is if you have something that comes up e.g. you know you feel like you're not good enough you know, in the job that you're in because you've not been taught your greatness or you've been put on a system that just doesn't appreciate absolutely everyone. You know, people are going to work and they're just not appreciated. And then some jobs are made to be appear to be greater than another. So that's going to cause a wound. So if you're getting up every single day, and you're going into a job that is just not pleasing to you, you're not going to feel very good within yourself. And every day, that wound's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that wound needs to be healed. You understand? So you have to find a way to see that you're good enough, even if, you know, whoever you're working with is not appreciating you or you've been made to believe by society that you're not good enough. It goes for people on benefits as well, because I would like to talk about these types of people as well, because if you're made to believe that you are not good enough because you don't have a job, 
that's not true. You're good enough. And then you're made to believe. I hear people say all of the time, you're taking from tax payers money and this is an area that I will be talking about as well because people are not working because they don't want to work people are working because they don't believe in themselves they don't think they're good enough they may have been abused in the past they have to do therapy and sometimes people don't even know that they need to do therapy and people say they're sponging off the system and I don't see what they're sponging off of because they don't really get loads and loads of money. I could understand if they were getting like millionaire money, but we have to understand that money is actually made in a factory. And, you know, no one is really giving anybody any money because money is made from trees, you know. So it's like... If someone's born into a household where the parent can't read and write and the parent didn't have parents that brought them up to see their worth, then it's going to go on to that child. Or if they're brought up in a household where their parents didn't work because they were abused, the cycle will continue. So I think before anybody judges anyone that doesn't work, you really need to go and have a conversation with them. And by you having a conversation with them, you might be able to help them believe in themselves more so they can get out there and be a part of the community. Because I know there's a hell of a lot of people that want to feel that they can be something. So that's something I want to talk about as well because it's not right to put people down. You know, everybody needs to be given confidence and self-esteem. Everybody needs to be filled, feel valuable. And I think it's about time that we stop having arguments and share, learn to share, you know, because people continuously said that they're paying people on benefits, their money, and it's actually a setup from the government to make people argue and it's also a setup for people to lower their self-esteem. So the person saying they're sponging off the system is actually lowering their self-esteem. They won't be able to see their richness enough because it's making people feel poorer. So if you're saying that person is sponging, then you're putting that in your subconscious, your mind, and you're missing out on your wealth. And I hope that makes sense. So be happy for people. Try your best not to gossip and get involved. Try your best to help another instead of hindering another. And then the more you see, the more wealth you see, the more wealth you're going to get. And if you can help another, let them know, yes, you can be a valuable part of society. Yes, you can get out there and be as great as you possibly want to be. And yes, I know we really have to have patience with you. Because they may not have no confidence. And that's what it boils down to at the end of the day. They have no belief in themselves. Because they've got no one to tell them how great they are. Do you understand? And that's how the world needs to get. It needs to start helping people. Because we have pains within ourselves. Inner wounds. So... I really want to just brush on that subject. We don't know what another's going through. Okay? What's the point of sticking your nose up and saying, I'm grander? Great, great for you. It's lucky you. Go and help someone else to be grander also. Don't stick up your nose and look down on people because it will catch up. That same way of thinking will catch up with you. And you never know. You might place yourself in that predicament. If you look down on another, karma has no friends. You understand? So you're opening up wounds within yourself that you don't want to open up because we have to be very careful because we need that other person to heal their wounds. So when it comes to feeling inferior because you don't feel like you're in a good enough job, or you don't feel you're good enough, full stop. 
it's due to the past okay it's due to the way you've been brought up and you have to remember that most of this world well I don't want to say country world has, is not designed for most people to win so we have to be strong enough within ourselves to say hey all of what is happening around us is fake and even though they've made that person appear to look greater in actual fact if you sit down with them they probably may be going for the same type of inner pains as you but nobody's really telling the truth no one's being authentic so it's best not to look at another and feel like they are having a better more more of a better life than you they might have more money and have the best cars and what have you but you got to remember they got overheads as well so what i'm saying this is the last thing i'm going to say because i will talk about um the inner child the inner child remember how a child is well children are supposed to be treated kindly so you're not supposed to be hard on yourself basically you're supposed to be loving to yourself so i've just gone through a few different type of scenarios a few different people that i know are very low on themselves i don't want to talk about my own situation when i feel comfortable i will talk about my situation more so i don't really want to talk about exactly what i'm going through until i feel 100 percent comfortable within myself but these are the main reasons or we feel like our parents haven't brought us up properly which i have a lot of issues with because they didn't really sit down and let me know what they were going through because they're going through a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But they didn't sit down and tell me why. So I had to come to my own understanding. And it's been very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. I have days every single day where I'm questioning why they abandoned me. You know, they've never sat down and told me why they abandoned me. You know? And I can't understand why to this day... They haven't sat down and told me. So I've had to go through hell to heal myself. And I'm still trying to get the light bulb to come on. You know? And all, all these people around me... What's this on now? Don't, don't, didn't see it as a big deal. And I'm saying to them, what would you do without your mum and dad? And they say, but your grandparents brought you up. You should be grateful. I said, I didn't have my parents... But they think that the grandparents compensated for the the loss of my parents. And I, I look at them and I think, but you was brought up by your parents. How can you say that to me? Some people are so cold-hearted, it's unbelievable. And then they try and point the finger and say that I'm cold-hearted because I've spoken about such and such and such about it. But manipulate, you know people manipulating? And I said, you... Because I said my parents walked out on me, you're trying to point the finger. And you can't heal around people like that. Because they're just being nasty. You see, it's nasty, they're nasty. Because they don't want to tell the truth. And they want to tell lies. And I've had so many people lie. All because I'm needing to heal. And they're not allowing me to heal. Because they're making up lies and saying, I shouldn't be talking about my parents like that. I said, but they shouldn't have walked out on a child. They shouldn't have walked out on a child. And you're telling me that what they've done is right. Do you understand? That's what they're saying to me. And then someone told me that I'm in the wrong for something. Because they're trying to prove a point. I said, if you can say that about parents walking out on a child, then at the end of the day, you are fine. Because you've lived a corrupt life yourself. You've done the same thing. That's why you don't want to admit what these people have done, because you've done the same thing. So you have to make sure when you're healing... Do not place yourself... You're going to probably... You, you probably will meet cold, nasty people. You more than likely will. 
you know you always get them because they don't want to admit their wrongs you know and it's not to say that you're talking to them about their wrongs because you know everybody thinks about themselves when you're trying to heal and someone said I need to get over myself and everyone hears voices I've heard it all it's like I'm not allowed to have a voice that's what it basically was so what I'm saying to you you have to be your own best friend because I'm telling you that for me anyway I know not every family is like this I know there's families out there that are loving and are nurturing but it just goes to show what I was in there was no love at all so there's no point in placing yourself around the same people that don't love do not make that mistake to keep putting yourself around the same people that hurt you because they're not going to be any different make sure you place yourself around people that love you and if you can't find anyone that love you there's always books and mentors out there that try their absolute best. There's only so much they can do. And like I said, books have helped me. Talking to God has helped me. I have to go through a lot of meditation. I have to talk. You know, I have to write. You know. And I said by next year I'm going to get all my power back. I am not going to let these people control my life anymore. And you have to be careful for the ones that have not healed themselves, you know. Because if you bring up your story, they're going to remember theirs. And then they're going to attack you because they think through your healing that, they, that you're trying to hurt them. And you're not, you're just trying to heal yourself. So any type of trauma that comes up, any type... Of memory come that comes up you have to sit with it and you have to let it be and you have to just be kind to it and say I love you I understand that you're here right now and I'm just gonna support you coming here right now and I'm just going to love you right now and I'm just gonna make sure that I nurture these thoughts and these feelings and just self-talk yourself and I'm going to make sure that I make you feel good because that's what should have been happening during the time that you was having that experience but you got to remember nobody was there at that time and then when you have, say today you've had a bad experience with somebody it is going to sit in your head because that person's gone and schemed and planned something and then it will play in your memory because it wasn't loving like I had a, a conversation with somebody and it's co constantly playing on my mind and now I'm finding out that this person um, is praying dramas and lies the way it's playing in my head so I wasn't in a loving conversation and I actually didn't realise that this person wasn't being loving. So this person's corrupt. So you have to be careful of those type of people. And they've got into my head. And they're fake. These people are fake. So you're, you're never going to know. Because in their mind, they're always scheming. But they don't probably don't know. Because their mind is so used to doing the, these sorts of things to people. Probably from way, way, way back. So you have to be careful of those sort of unloving people. When you're trying to heal your inner child, you're not going to be able to be around all loving people because they just don't exist. So don't let them win by making you feel less. Just sit with it. Love yourself. And the more you love yourself, I'm hoping this is making sense, through the images or the, you know voices that might come up just be kind to yourself so that wound closes you know just as you would be kind to a child and you give that child a cuddle and you tell that child everything's gonna be just fine 
And don't worry about that. Everything's going to be just brilliant. And you are a beautiful person. Because I'm going to tell you one more thing before I head off from this topic. If another person can't love you, it goes to show a hell of a lot about that person. What that person is trying to do is put their nastiness inside of you. So what I've learned from understanding about the inner child, you have to love that inner child because someone else is trying to put their nastiness upon you. And by you feeling hurt by their actions, you're actually allowing their ways to ingrain inside of you. But once you give yourself that love, the love will overpower the corrupt ones. And it's a very, very powerful thing to learn. So when you see the imagery and the thoughts or if you're down on yourself about maybe not achieving something, don't let it win. You've got to practice it. It's something I've got to keep practicing because I've only learned it probably in the last couple of days. Because this is something that I continuously had to keep reading about. And it's come, it's come to light that you have to nurture any kind of negativity, anything that negative that comes up, your inner child will always cry out to tell you, I need to be loved right now because I wasn't around a loving situation. I wasn't in a loving environment. I wasn't around a loving person. So we're not supposed to be around any of that. But the society we live in, doesn't doesn't give us that do you understand so the situation has to be loved you have to love it you cannot feed it you cannot give it any negative power because that negativity has already come your way so there's no point in feeding it twice because it's only going to grow so I'm going to end it there and remember your inner child will always tell you when it needs love. Anytime that hurtful feeling comes up, remember to nurture it just as you would nurture a little child, just as you would nurture a flower. Anything that you love, treat your inner child like that. Okay? And you will heal sicknesses, you will heal everything, you will heal... You have to be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with yourself at all times. And I'm going to end on this topic very, very briefly. It's about love. And it's basically it will be on the same type of, you know, subtopics of the inner child because we need to talk about love in a way where, again... Doing things that you love to do that makes you feel happy and basically some kind of hobby or if you like spending time with your children or if you like going out for a walk or if you like doing a new hairstyle like I like putting on my wigs and makeup, it makes me feel good. Or if you like learning something new, this eyebrow has got on my nail all for it because I've stuck it too high. Or if you, and I've been trying to pull it down all this time, and it's not come down. If you um, like reading or writing or um, spending time with friends and family, love is that. That's doing things that you love, you like, that makes you feel happy and excited. So do that for yourself as often as you can. Anything that makes you happy, anything that makes you smile, that's something loving. And also um, give yourself a treat. You know, it's very good to give yourself a treat. 
some type of treat is good. And um, taking yourself somewhere nice is good as well. And being kind to yourself, like I've just said previously, being kind. That one I'm really, really working on as well because I find in, I found it out the last week basically that we, we, we mustn't care what anybody has to say to us. If you get someone chatting rubbish to you, they're not important. We can't, we cannot, once we don't make these type of people important, there'll be less of them in the world basically. Like we're sort of people that want to be spoken to respectfully, but you're always going to meet corrupt people because they found a way to get into people's head. So you have to be so nice to yourself to make sure that you're not allowing anyone to upset the love you have within yourself because they're only going to change you into their what into them so you've got to work on loving yourself through any type of negativity it don't matter if it's you know you've got to pay a debt or you've got to I don't know, if you're going through problems with, you know, a family member, or if you, excuse me, can't do something around the house, you can't, you know, whatever it may be, you can't let it get to you. I mean, I'm learning from my own experiences. I've not really been kind to myself, but I didn't know any better, you know. Because we're taught that we need to be perfect all the time. You know, and it's it's actually a lie. This uh, this eyelash is really getting in my nose. I'm sorry that I'm doing this on the TV Glitch show, but you know when something just irritated you and I can't believe that I've done it like this? Maybe you can't see it, but I can. And I do this all of the time because I just throw myself together. And then I'm paying, making it a problem which I've got to not do but it's just irritating me this eyelash so next time and I've, I've got to practice my eyelashes because I was going to cut it because it needs to come right down and it's not coming down so anyway as I'm going on see I'm trying to be a perfectionist and it's not working but I've got to work on my eyelashes so I have basically I didn't know I didn't know that you know expectations in order for you to move forward and it's say if you're not happy in the sort of flat that you live in or the house you live in you're not going to move forward if you put in that environment down and it took me a long time to learn it or you run a certain person that I get like that I'm, I'm very much I love to be around positivity but it, it just doesn't work. So I became sensitive to other people and the way they talk to me because some people just... So what the way some people talk is just... I, I think to myself, why, why are you talk? Why do you talk like that? And then they're talking to me like that and I'm saying... But I'm not that type of person and you because their mind is like that and I get very agitated and irritated if I'm around anyone that's talking any kind of rubbish to me. And then the people continuously keep talking rubbish, even if you tell them this keep because they don't know how to be positive. No matter how much you try to get them to understand. This is what is dawning on me and I'm starting to understand this. And it's, I just say this, it's, they're corrupt within themselves and there's nothing you can do to help those type of people. So, yeah, you have to be a strong person, especially when someone's speaking about you. 
in a way that is not that one is the most hardest one of all when they're talking about you in a way that's just not true and it's do you know it's not even worth responding to those type of people it's but what is best is to just walk away from them because what will happen is their way of thinking will get inside of your head there's no way that you can get out of it so what I've just said when it comes to nurturing your inner child if you hear a conversation that you've had that is negative and they've said well you're rubbish and you're 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 not good at your job that will go inside your mind you can't get away from it because you've had that conversation with that person and unfortunately you've had to have that type of conversation you have to make sure that um, you just lo love yourself and tell yourself you're good enough you're good enough you're brilliant and know that you sit with it and be calm and um, put inside of yourself what you know you are. Make sure you only put within you, you. No one else is you. No one else is you. So no one else can tell you about you. No one. You know which you have to understand so say you're on a, I say a job again and your boss tells you you crap at your job not even they have the right because their standards are different to yours because they're running the place that you're, you're, you're not doing that job they see more than you what they're supposed to do is say hey up I'm going to train you to reach the level that I'm seeing or they may have been trained more given more while they see more it's just an example so all these people that want to go around making out like they're greater it's because they've been given more like I was saying to some people I wasn't born I wasn't brought up with my parents so I have limitations they keep telling me it's not so. I said, how can it not be so if you've been brought up with your parents? I will always be, have limitations because I've never been brought up with my parents. So I'm always going to be a little bit more behind, even if I have all the money in the world. And I said to the person, what is it like to have a mum and dad? Because I have no idea. They're alive, but I've never been brought up with them up to a certain no up to a certain point up to I was about eight so tell me what it's like to have a mum and dad and they tell me my grandparents showed me I said but no they're my grandparents they're not my biological parents so make sure and I have to heal those inner wounds me nobody has helped me to heal them and I think to myself because they haven't been through it they have no compassion, they have no love, they have no empathy. But because they haven't been through it, and I have never met anyone that has been able to support me. So I've had to take my life into my own hands and figure it out. And it's been the most hardest journey ever because I've had loads of breakdowns. And I sat here this week, I've not gone to the gym, I've not really gone out. I went to London last week and I said to myself, I'm just in this house and I felt not alone. I've been feeling a little bit down this week, but I didn't feel alone. But I was saying to God, is this my life? Is this how it's going to be for the rest of my life? And I'm, am I always forever going to be by myself? And I had these feelings inside of me this week. But for the first time in my life, excuse me, I just sat with it. I just took it. I didn't question it. I had a little tearful time. I cried a little bit this week. But I didn't let it overtake me. And I kept reading. And I said to myself, this is for a good reason. 
I said to myself, I'm going to go and travel. I thought to myself, I thought of my dad. And I said, and I thought of my mum. And I said to, to God, please can I find some type of peace and inner healing for this situation? Because I do want to go and see my mum because she don't ring me. She doesn't come and see me. My dad will pick up the phone, but he's always talking about some type of business. But, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit more. But he will ring me now and again because I really, really went at him for some things. And I haven't really been able to have any good relationships with him. And I've just been feeling very, very down for many, many years about the situation. And I want to find some relief. And I want to I wanna forgive. And I don't want to have this inner pain anymore. Because it really affects my health, big, like big time. I just want it to release. I just want to let it go. But the inner, it's the inner self. It keeps coming up. The abandonment. The rejection. And the feeling of being alone. And the same feeling of... I, I can't support myself if I don't have help. But there's that same weak feeling continuously keeps coming up inside of me. Because it's an inner child wound. Which I'm going back to inner child wound. Even though I'm supposed to be talking about love. Because I wasn't loved. And at the end of the day. My parents must have not loved. I think my dad was loved more than my mum. I know my mum wasn't loved at all. So, But her mum tried to love her as much as she could. But her mum was an alcoholic. But God bless her soul. She tried the best she could. So... They don't understand and they've never been able to support my pains of being abandoned. And people don't see it as anything big. But it is such a um, hard subject to talk about because it affects the inner world. You know, because the inner child still needs the love because I'm talking about love even though I've just spoke about inner child it's still having to learn how to love I'm still having to learn how to love myself I can love another I don't think I'm 100% brilliant at loving another but it has to come from within so if the parents didn't teach it because they were unable to teach it. Because they just don't know about it themselves. I had to learn. But I have to learn about it from within. And that's the hardest part of all. Placing it inside of me. And just releasing. And forgiving. But the forgiveness hasn't come. Because the thoughts keep coming up. You know. The past thoughts. and You're supposed to be with your parents supposed to be with them you know you're supposed to be brought up by them so i'm ha i'm having to be the independent one it's all on me the love is all on me so that's when we've got self-love have to learn self-love can't be dependent on parents you know so I have to find that relief, that release. And it's only God that can do it for me. You know? So love is about inner love. You've got to find your inner love. If you had a bad relationship, you've got to find that love. If it was a long, long, long term one and that person's gone because we get attached. If you love your family and they can't be there for you. They can't support you and everything is on you. You've got to pay all the bills. You've got to do... I have to do everything. Me, with my children. And there's... They, when you just feel detached, and I found that that detachment is because of the dependency. Because I am supposed to have a strong extended family and a mum and a dad, but I don't have it. 
and they're not as strong as they're supposed to be. So I have to find a way to be powerful, be loving to myself. I have to, because I can't make, I can't change anything. I can't change. I, I've always got this fantasy for so many years in my mind. I've always had it in my mind of parents and, you know, a family that is just unified and connected and can pick up the phone and talk to everyone and people ring me, I ring them. And we're just all happy. It's not happening. So there's no point in having that vision in my head I'm here with my daughter I have a son he lives with his dad but I ring him when I want they are there and I have to love myself with the life that I have and my boyfriend is far away at the moment I have to live with the life I've got but I haven't been able to see it because I haven't been able to love me because I've still been attached to my parents. And it, but if I keep constantly thinking about that, it's gone away. It happened. Traumatized. Can't love myself if I keep relaying it over and over again. There's no way it's going to change. I can never ever change it. You know? So that's one, one problem that you may have in your life. There's are so many different problems out there that I haven't addressed. I can only speak about my experiences. But any type of issue that you're going through, you cannot let it control you. And it will hurt. This has been hurting me for far too many years to the point where it's overtaken my life to the point where I could have done so much with my life and I was angry because it's just a waste of my life but some way somehow I today have to sit with me and trust enough within me and feel loving enough towards myself to say hey you got this. You have got this. Everything's okay. And make sure that I give myself the love that I never receive from others. Because I'm looking for the love from other people. And they're adamant that they can't give it. They are adamant that they cannot give it and the more they tell me they can't give it the more my inner self is being filled up with pain so I have to detach myself because you can't place and connect yourself with unloving people it's not to say you don't want to see them but you cannot connect your, connect yourself with people that don't know how to love so I have to make sure I detach myself in order to receive the love that I know I deserve. So make sure you do that for yourself, even if you're not, because I'm here with my, just being my daughter. My son lives with his dad, but he, I see him. You have to give yourself that I've waited far too long to do this for myself. Make sure... It doesn't matter if it's just you by yourself. Once you say, once you say it, you're going to give yourself the love that no one else will give you. You will get the love and then you will attract other people that will show you the, the love that is rightfully yours. So I'm going to end on that note. I hope you've enjoyed this diva glitch show i've enjoyed myself it's gone very well i hope i made sense and i will be back with another show and i've just placed myself in um this comfortable environment i normally am downstairs with the backdrop but i was sitting here it's 1 25 in the morning I was meant to do the Diva Glitch show earlier, 
but um, I just wasn't motivated to do it. I, I like I said all this week, I just haven't felt motivated. I've been not I'm not so much worried. I just sat with everything this week, and all of a sudden, about eleven o'clock, I felt led to do the Diva Glitch show, and I'm glad that I've done it now. So this is the first Diva Glitch show on YouTube. Please like and subscribe and share. I will be doing more Diva Glitch shows. Also. And um, I just want you to... enjoy your life as much as you can even if it's a little bit every single day the more you enjoy the more the enjoyment will grow it's not to say you're going to be going out partying every single day and drinking and smoking every day that's not what enjoyment is it is about doing things that are good for you that are healthy for you that are going to nurture you and support you and bring you to better places okay that, that's what i mean about enjoying your life and making sure that you surround yourself with people that treat you well and if you're not in that environment keep loving yourself okay any which way you can even if it's something little saying a kind word say, telling yourself well done telling yourself that you love yourself Big or small, make sure you do that for yourself every single day. Remember, remember, you are good enough. Okay, remember that you are good enough at all times. So, I'm going to say goodbye. This is the end of the Diva Glitz show. And I'll end it with the Diva Glitz tango. It's a bit low at the moment, but I haven't got the loudspeaker. So, I love you all. Diva Hope you enjoy. You'll have a great time hosted by Serena. Hope you enjoy. You'll have a great time hosted by Serena. Hope you enjoy. Oh, oh. So goodbye, beautiful people. I'll see you in the next Diva Glitch show soon. And I'll be back with another vlog. Love you all. Mwah.